welcome to another episode of Boss Talk. I am Satyam, founder of Brain on Script and host for this episode. And today we are going to talk about emotional health. For this, I have a special guest, Dipan Shuravel. He is a life coach, a mentor. He works with people on emotional health. And in this episode, we are going to talk about emotional health, emotional wellness. We are going to talk about stress anxiety we are going to talk about all the different emotions and how you can cope up with that so without wasting any further time i just want to dive in deep into the episode here we go dipanshu thank you so much first of all for being here with me in this show thanks a lot thank you for having me all right dipanshu so first of all just let me know a bit about your journey your story so that our audience will get to know what you are doing now sure so um if you ask me for a 20 second intro i'm a life coach and a mentor so i help people with confidence and emotional wellness okay and if somebody wants to become a life coach i help them become a life coach and create a coaching business as well so okay. i'm working on these two projects and i started in like a little before this whole pandemic happened mm-hmm. and i've been on this self improvement journey since 2016 i had my first episode of you know um, anxiety and um, i had a tough time back then um, i started working with a therapist back then psychotherapist and that helped me a lot so i went from reading toxic not, not toxic but sad fiction to mm-hmm. motivating non fiction right some something like that so i started reading more of uh, self improvement books personal development books and i've always loved to experiment stuff like with my sleep with how i can learn differently with my routine with um different things differently right even with my career i've done so many experiments so um i got really curious into personal development because who can be the better subject to experiment than myself right so one thing led to another i've been reading books like since since 2016 and i got to know i got to know what life coaching is and i've been studying online what is a life coach and all that stuff so i knew i wanted to do something of my own and life coaching sounded like a very good profession that would use my gifts my gifts of um helping people my gifts of being a good listener an understanding person somebody who refuses to give up right so that's how it all started uh, in like late 2019 early 2020 and then pandemic happened i was doing a full time job um i didn't have to travel because it was work from home so i got a little more time to ex- explore this field right. i worked right. with a lot of coaches got a certification and one thing led to another and i've been doing this full time for 3 years now oh great so journey sounds great uh, dipanshu so you have experienced the transition yourself first and now you are helping people with that yeah yeah perfect okay coming back to the podcast now if if i talk about health there are three verticals physical health emo- mental health and emotional health okay so people are aware about physical and mental right but emotional is something which they ignore knowingly or unknowingly okay so i just want through this podcast to give them an idea what exactly emotional health is what exactly emotional wellness is and how can they improve on it how can they work on it okay so starting from there only what is emotional wellness cool. so as you mentioned there are different verticals and different coaches different authors will tell you that there are different verticals so for example when somebody works with me i talk about mental health uh physical health i talk about financial health i talk yeah. about your relationships right so there are different mm-hmm. verticals True. and i believe the difference between or how i look at it is mental health might have a lot of stuff related to your neurochemical stuff right that's mm-hmm. happening inside of your brain your emotional wellness has more to do with how well you manage how well you manage your emotions right that would mean your emotions of anger regret shame guilt confusion anxiety um nervousness 
like there are this this variety of emotions right and almost nobody of us none of us know how to you know manage these emotions how to process these emotions uh, because we have been taught how to uh, do like a table of two which is i don't know how you know useful um but we have never been taught how to manage the emotions how to uh, process what's going in your head right so uh, that's why emotional wellness is uh, considering what we went through since 2020 um it's more of a reason why there's a necessity to learn more about emotional wellness so most people who you see as uh you know not doing well physically let's say people who are fat people who you know have excess weight people who have unhealthy habits people who um you know shout a lot people who cry a lot people who are too shy to speak right well right. most of those um irregularities happen because we don't know how to process emotions okay so so you have already talked about the signs of emotional health right poor yeah. emotional health if i if i want to you know just categorize it properly in mm-hmm. a in a proper manner so that people will get to know what are the signs they have to look for if they are going through poor uh, emotional health so what are those indicators or signs yeah the signs indicators or uh, the let's say symptoms right of poor yeah. emotional health. um there are different ways one of them could be people who do binge eating people who have unhealthy relationship with their food maybe it is too much eating maybe it is too less of eating right so that's a very very clear sign of emotional uh, irregularity which i have been through at some point um at some point because i had developed such a uh, unhealthy relationship with food i didn't know when to stop eating right so i quickly gained so much weight in a very short time and then i worked through that um it's been 3 years so since 2016 for like 4 years since 2020 i never knew when to stop somebody else would needed to tell me that the much you have eaten a lot now it's time mm-hmm. to stop right it's just that my body stopped giving me signals like my brain stopped giving the signals or receiving signals from stomach got it so uh and since i worked on that since i worked on my binge eating my emotional wellness for the last 3 years i have had zero episodes of binge eating or overeating like zero episodes wow right so that's totally uh, humanly possible and obviously different people would have different levels of emotional issues uh, mine i got better by working with a diet coach for like only a month because i was so much uh dedicated also to work on this and maybe i did not have a disease some people also have developed diseases where they need more medical help right, right. so that's right. one of the ways looking at your uh, how you are eating so Perfect. if i have to simplify that how do we know you know we are not emotionally well is by looking at how we are living our life the whole life how we are eating how we are speaking some people speak very fast right you know that they might have some overthinking issues mm-hmm. when they speak too fast right or there might be something worth exploring there um how you are sleeping if your sleep is not like if you are not getting quality sleep or you don't feel uh energetic enough after your sleep mm-hmm. you need to see if you are having some extra stress in your life right the way you eat too much too less irregular without hunger all of that right um it could also mean how you feel about being social now being anti social might be an issue right being an introvert is not an issue introverts want to talk to people but not maybe as much true right so um extroverts get their energy from people introverts get their energy by being alone right so uh being an introvert is not a problem but if you feel uncomfortable every day when you talk to someone there might be some uh suppressed emotions oh. right and then whenever somebody or something comes on tv and you feel triggered that means there might be something worth exploring right 
one of the ways of looking at your emotional wellness would be to see how you are living your life how you are living each and each individual aspect of your life for example when you go to shower when you take a bath are you in a hurry like are you being very quick like i need to finish this up in 2 minutes or mm-hmm. are you relaxingly enjoy that moment mm-hmm. right so these are different ways on how we can look at how we are doing things differently another way of looking at it is uh, whenever there is a chance to speak up in a class in a meeting you know in my business in my job do i hesitate right if you hesitate speaking up making your point or if you think about that what will others say or what if i fail what if they mock me what if nobody listens to me if you have all these thoughts that means maybe you're not able to process your emotions well right so a lot of things yes the general flow is your thoughts when you repeat them they become your beliefs mm. right the beliefs you have come out of your body so your thoughts and beliefs are in your head right how they do they become reality is through emotions and your actions okay. so for example if you have this belief that uh, money creates a lot of problem in life if i have a mm-hmm. lot of money pe- people with money can create a lot of problem any time your bank balance will let's suppose you won a lottery if you have that belief your emotions will be negative towards money right so emotions is how your inner self meets the reality of the world okay. right if you have a uh, more positive and empowering um, uh, thoughts and beliefs for example one of the beliefs is that you know what everything is figure outable you can figure out anything mm-hmm. it, can work. it will work so when you meet any tough situation any easy situation your emotions will be positive ones you'll feel feel empowered you'll feel light you'll feel joyful but if your thoughts are oh my god i always get issues whenever i try something new i get issues so regardless of how easy it is to solve it's going to be projected as a negative emotion in your life got it yeah true all right so now how can we enhance or improve our emotional health on a daily basis like we we'll get to know that okay these are the problems okay so what i can do as an individual on a daily basis to improve my emotional health so there are two levels of bringing this change this growth okay. uh, emotional wellness growth let's say uh, the level one is information and the mm-hmm. second level or second stage is transformation or okay. embodiment so first is you need some information to challenge your current thoughts for example let's say one of your thoughts is that men don't cry men shouldn't be emotional okay yes. so if you have that thought if you have that belief that men shouldn't talk about emotions and only girls talk about emotions let's say so first we need to have the information that there's a possibility that might not be true or the opposite Definitely. of it is true right maybe it's okay to talk about emotions so that's the information that uh, when you talk about emotions you'll be able to live your life in a better way that you'll be able to sleep better that you'll be able to have more fun lightness more happiness in your life right if you are able to communicate your emotions better you are able to process your emotions better so that's the emotion uh, that the information level the second stage is to embody what you know to okay. actually put it into practice to put it in your life to put it in your body right so that next time when i get a little nervous i know that it's going to pass or i can talk right. about it i don't need to you know convert it i don't need to go spiraling down with it right so the level one you can read a book you can go through a webinar you can take up a course the information level the right. embody level works really well working with a coach like that's the best way of working on it okay okay got it does that mean you cannot do it on your own no you can do everything on your own it's just that i can also build my own home but why would i want to make it brick by brick if somebody else has done it i can take the help definitely and that's the best way to go about it because you you have to figure it out the things 
which already you know someone else have already figured it out or right. it is tough yeah. work it it is tough yeah, work it is to do it by yourself it is like one of the toughest work to do by yourself because of your meta thoughts like right now you're thinking okay i'm thinking that my color like my t-shirt is black okay i'm thinking but then a level of other thinking is i'm thinking about my thinking why do i only thought about my shirt why did i not th- think about you know somebody else else shirt why did i not think about my pant right mm-hmm. thinking about your thinking which becomes kind of a rabbit hole to do it by yourself when you're doing it with a professional with a coach with a therapist it really helps to simplify everything agree yeah all right so okay i have figured figure out that okay i have these emotions you know which is not good for me which is not good for my emotional health now how can one navigate through these difficult emotions and get better in life so one of the things would be to understand the information level to understand that no emotions are good or bad if the world has only one color it will be very like boring so right we see all the colors you see yellow you see you know brown door you see white you see right. black gray that's what makes the world colorful it's right colorful. same ways if we only experience our experience only one emotion we would not be able to experience the life we are here to experience right you so that that's called the duality of concept that there is no happiness without the sadness mm. i don't know somewhere in those bookshelf i have a book called a uh, no mud no lotus okay right so that means uh, for you to experience the beauty of lotus you need to have the messiness of mud mm-hmm. for you to experience happiness you need to experience grief you need to experience sadness you need to experience hopelessness so in essence no emotions are good or bad we label it but we don't need to label it it's just that emotions are kind of waves that are going to come and go you are happy now remember the last time you got excited about something maybe <clears throat> you had an achievement let's say you won a prize how long did that last it goes away yeah true right so it's us humans who cling to emotions they are like little kids in the park so they want attention they'll come to you you can hug them and then they'll go and you know play again or you can ignore them you can avoid them you can cling a little too much that's why they stay with you for longer than required it's better to instead of looking at how can i be happy how can i be happy it's more healthy to see that the emotions are going to come and go so how can i learn to process and not cling not avoid the reason we have emotional issues is we are not able to process them we are either too attached to something because it's comforting it's familiar or we are avoiding it totally because it's tough to deal with them mm-hmm. right so when we learn to process the emotions that's when we learn to become emotionally healthy become emotionally intelligent all right okay so dipanshu now we'll talk about stress a bit okay um uh, like you know nowadays we are into a fast paced society okay everything is chaos we have to do lot of things and yeah people are not able to manage the stress or emotions properly everyone is living either a default life or okay. a created life mm mm-hmm. A default life is that that people ask you to live. You should do this. You should do that. You should study. You should study till graduation. Ninety percent should... of people. Like that's a default setting, right? That's a default yeah. setting. Yes. You should go and study this particularly. You should wake up at this time. You should sleep at this time. You should work like this. You should try this company. Right. So that's a default life. Um, that's like the most stressful way of living. The default life. the other way of living is a created life where you can decide that you know what it's not stress i don't care and how do we do that is by living your like yourself 
And that would mean having boundaries. That would mean understanding your gifts. That would mean, you know, being aware of who you are. That would mean, you know, utilizing your own gifts in a more sustainable manner. So we can either live created life or default life. And that's one way of dealing with stress by actually creating who you are being, who you are living and what you're doing in your life. How to deal with stress better? One of the ways is getting started with creating a lifestyle that you want to live. Right? Okay. Most people are so stuck. They feel so helpless that I don't know what the solution is. Uh, that's where the depression comes from. Depression is hopelessness, right? They, they don't have any hope that they could live a created life. So when we understand that, that um, it's totally your choice, you can try something new. Sure, it may take a couple of months for you to get where you want to go, but you can start today. You don't need so, to wait for something to happen. You don't need to give power to external circumstances. You can take back that power. You are the most powerful human in your own story, right? And so that's one way. Second way is shifting the perspective on how you look at stress. Stress is actually how the life begins and how the life ends. Stress is one of the most important factors in life. Stress is how literally our body grows. Little mm -hmm. kids have so much pain because of their teeth, because of their, you know, body parts are growing. Right, right, right. So stress is a very positive factor when you look at it this way. So but it's a also, kind of indication of growth. Yeah, that's literally how you grow. That's literally how life happens because the mother goes to the labor stress, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's the matter of perspective. Anytime you get stress in your life, there's an opportunity an opportunity to either create a boundary, okay, if it's like somebody else is giving you stress that you don't want, or an opportunity to grow that this stress I got, this new project I got, and you know what, it's a little stressful, but that also means that something positive can happen through this. Stress is how diamonds are made. There's no stress. We would only have coals in jeweler shops. A great Dipanshu. Like, yeah, you have changed the perspective and I hope that many of the audience will get to know that how to shift the perspective and see it in a different way. All right. So now how emotional health can impact our relationships? Mm. So it's a um, really interesting experience I've had recently. So I was working with a client and uh, she had some issues with her mother. She's doing her master's and um, Indian parents have a lot of issues with, I know I'm generalizing, but like most Indian parents have some issues with control. If they want to control their kids, mm -hmm. that's a stereotype and that's a lot true. So she complained when, when we were having our conversation, she, the, that person complained that my mother is not understanding. Right. And um, so the question I asked her is, you want her to be understanding, right? How much understanding are you for her? How much do you understand her? One way of, so here's a, a very clear truth of life. There is only one person in life you can change. That's you. You cannot change anyone else. You can try, you can inspire, you can motivate, you can manipulate, but you cannot change anyone else. True. There's only one person you can change in life. And when you change something in yourself, that reflects in the world. So if you want to see more truth in the world, that means you need to bring out more truth in your life. If you want to be more understanding, if you want world to understand you better, that means you first need to understand yourself better and you need to understand others better, right? Everything else that, like, that is happening in your, in your life right now is a mirror of what is happening inside of you. So if you do not love yourself enough, you will not be able to love anyone else and they will not be able to love you either, right? So how do we... Uh, improve our relationships through emotional maturity and emotional growth is by working on ourselves. 
right? Who am I being when I'm being a partner? Am I being condescending? Am I being, uh, am I showing them pity? Or am I being more empowering? Am I being someone who uplifts everyone else? Right. Right. So if I want my partner to be more understanding, to love me more, that also tells me that it's a mirror that I'm not loving myself more, like myself enough, and I'm also not loving her enough. Most issues in relationships happen when we want them to give us something and we are not ready to give it first. Got it. Like, I want them to love me more. I want them, I want them to understand me better. I want them to give me space. But are you giving them those things? Right. And um, I, I was checking about uh, your website. So you have a course on gratitude as well, right? Yes. So I'm I'm reading the magic book again, like third, fourth time this time. Mm. Um, and um, one of the things that we learn in law of attraction is the only way to get something is by giving it first. So are there any common misconception or myth people have uh, regarding, you know, emotional health, emotional wellness and all those things? Have you come across any? So one of them is I always want to be happy. I just don't want to be <laughs> right? Life will be very boring if you only could feel one emotion. Right? Second is labeling emotions as good or bad. They're not necessary. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They are what they are. It's going to come. It's going to go. The problem happens when you're feeling one emotion a lot. Even if you feel a lot of happiness, a lot, like only happiness, they're going to put you in mental institution. Because then you're not able to understand empathy. You're not able to understand pain. That means even if I, you know, not I, but even if you get some pain, like, you know, you get a little accident, but you could only feel happiness. That's not going to help you. You wouldn't even understand that you got some pain in your bones. Right? Mm -hmm. So Experiencing only one emotion forever is usually not the most healthiest way of looking at things. So. Um, another misconception is, you know what, I can do this. But why do you want to do this alone? Why not take somebody's help? It doesn't, it's not going to make you look weak. But why can't I do this myself? Because you don't have to. You would also be making your own home. But do you live, like wherever you live, have you created that brick by brick? Do you grow your own vegetables? Or do you like help them, take them from farmers and, you know, sellers, right? So utilize some help from coaches. Another misconception would be that uh, so a very strong belief, a couple of strong beliefs around who you are and I just don't think I can change. That's like the toughest uh, thing to change when you say that out. right? When you believe that you can't change, uh, that's the situation where nobody else can help you either. Okay, got it. So, all right, Pyosh, so we, we are almost in the end of the podcast. And I just want to know, for the people, for the audience, do you have any advice for them? Those who want to combat with all the things and become a winner, champion in life. So, any advice for all the people, all the... So, number one is explore what it takes to work with a coach with a life coach, with an emotional wellness coach. Most of us have not experienced what life coaching is yeah. or what it can bring out of us, right? So the first invitation would be to, even if you don't think you have any issues, get on a call. Most life coaches offer free conversations. You can talk to me, you can message me. Um, talk to them, see how they can improve your life, how they can help you in your life. And uh, at the same time, you know how to improve your physical health, right? You need to walk a little more. You need to eat a little less junk. You need to improve your eating habits, sleep better, recovery, you know, give yourself recovery time. Same is for emotional wellness that you need to learn how to process them. How to process them is how to communicate. How do you communicate what you're feeling, how you're going through? And one of the ways could be to talking to a couple of understanding friends or talking to a coach, talking to a therapist, 
and having some habits to support them. Habits like journaling, habits like um, workout is a great habit for emotional wellness because when you move your body, they, you know your emotions get processed. And journaling, meditation, these are a couple of ways on how you can process better. All right. Uh, I have a bonus question for you as well, Adipanshu. Sure. Like, you have already told your story, okay? I just want you to compare your past self and your present self. Like, what are the things going around in your life at that time and how you're feeling right now with everything sorted? So I think I have um, mentioned this. I've written a post about it that uh, I feel I was born in 2016. Like I'm only in seven, eight years old because before that uh, I was living a life that I felt I was almost asleep in that life. Okay. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I was living a default life. Default what life. expected me to be living, right? I would, uh, I was great at academics i was great at you know sports as extracurricular activities at speaking and everything but most of it was because i wanted to please some people i wanted to impress i wanted to you know uh, be a good kid in their life right um and uh, so much of that changed since you know 2016 2017 since i started living a created life and now it's less about what will they think and a lot more, more about what do I want to do? What do I want to be doing here? How do I, how do I want to be living my life? And more than that, the more I'm growing spiritually, the more I'm walking down that spiritual journey, it's more about what does life want me to do here? What does nature, what does universe, what does God, what does higher, higher power want me to perform here? Maybe I'm in a script. What's my role to do here? So, hero of your story. Maybe that. Maybe supporting character in somebody else's story. I don't know. I'm a real. Yes, yes, definitely. I'm a Obviously, real. Right. Uh, like, like you are hero of your story, and definitely a supporting character in others. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very uh, proud to be a cheerleader to all my clients. So I'm a really great cheerleader. I want to keep growing. I'm a leader. I know I lead stuff. I try stuff first on myself before I advise it to somebody else, right? But that also means that the second part of my journey is also to support others, to you know bring others along, to be the cheerleader, to give them the, uh, there's a phrase we use, to champion them, to remind them of their gifts. All right. Thank you so much, Dipanshu, for sharing all the insights, all the things with us, with our audience. And I hope that our audience will get to know a lot many things because, you know, we don't talk much about it and we have to, right? We should. So thank you so much, Dipanshu. Thank you so much, Satyam. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for having me here. Same here. I hope you got a lot of value from this episode. If you do so, please like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to Braino Script in all the social media handles. I would like to thank Dipanshu once again for being here, for sharing all the insights, all the knowledge with us, all the learnings with us. And thank you so much, Dipanshu. If you people have any suggestions for us, please let us know in the comment box down below. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I want to see every one of you in the next episode as well. Till then, bye-bye.